Hi, this is Ty with Canix. In this video, we'll go over how to update permission groups, create new permission groups, and assign these to users. So there are two main uh, sets of permissions in Canix. The first is action permissions. So this dictates what an individual can view in Canix, which pages they have access to, as well as what data they can update. Approval permissions relate specifically to compliance submissions as well as some Canix only submissions. And these are for your approval process. So you, this way you can define what an individual should be able to create on their own and what actions should require some uh, manager approval first. For individuals, these uh, permission groups will be assigned during user creation here at the bottom. But you can also go and update permission groups in bulk if needed um, at any time. So you can select a number of different users, say uh, on the same team, and assign a new permission group. First, let's take a, take a look at a, an existing permission group, and we'll talk through some of the options here. For a full detailed list of all the permissions that are available to you, please see the web and mobile permissions for users guide in our help center. This is gonna go into uh, detail on each and every permission and exactly what it allows. Uh, but in this video, I'm gonna call out um, some of the more uh, high level functionality on the page, as well as talk about a few specific permissions. So if you need to delete a permission group, you'll do that from this actions menu right here. If you are updating a permission group, you'll be able to search different keywords in the search box here, and that'll lead you to the permission groups that contain that keyword. So it just makes it a little bit, little bit easier to uh, find permissions and update existing permission groups. Each action permission group is gonna have all of your compliance related submissions, as well as Canix only uh, submissions and pages. So in this case, you can see we've got a non-compliance actions section uh, defining you know, who can take some of these Canix only actions on plants, such as toggling a plant as a mother plant. So it's both the metric uh, related options and the Canix only options are controlled in this same view. Uh, just as a reminder, if you would like your metric permissions to continue to apply to users in Canix, what you'll do is add a, uh, add a metric key on the user account here, and then all of their submissions will be uh, managed by that key. So they'll only be able to make the submissions that they are allowed to make in metric. couple uh, specific permissions to call out here. Uh, first, let's take a look at sales order permissions. So for sales orders, you'll have the ability to give people access to only their own sales orders or to all sales orders. You'll also be able to define some uh, permissions based on the status of a sales order. So say you don't want an individual to be able to edit a sales order after it has been approved, you can move uh, their access to view only for all statuses after the approved status. So something helpful there to make sure no uh, unintentional edits are made to sales orders after the fact. Also, also worth noting that if you want a user to be able to submit manufacturing runs or confirm tasks in Canix, You'll need to have the deduct non cannabis inventory permission. This is what allows an individual to remove uh, non cannabis inventory from the system or, or log uh, the usage of that non cannabis inventory. Admin permissions, just you know, worth calling out as with any software program, be careful who uh, is provided permissions to the admin section. This defines who's going to be able to create and edit users who's gonna be able to define these permission groups and therefore the access that individuals have to data throughout Canix. 
um, you know, as well as the people who will be able to update your facility data. So items, locations, strains, um, vendors, and growth phases. Finally, I wanted to touch on labor cost permissions. So this defines who will have access to view labor costs in Canix. So we can see um, it's a little subtle here. The There's two options, either the labor costs and the labor hours or only the labor hours. So anyone who you do not want to see um, other individuals labor rates in Canix, you'll want to make sure this top bar is in the dark gray. So to do to switch this permission group so that these individuals can only see labor hours, I will select labor hours only as view and move the top bar labor costs in labor hours to no access. And if I wanted to reverse that, I'd move labor costs in labor hours to edit and labor hours only to no access. So a really important permission there, just wanted to touch on that briefly. And again, you'll be able to see all the granular permissions in the Help Center article here. For approval permissions, this will define uh, what an individual can approve and uh, which submissions require approval for that individual. So if there is a, a team member who you know maybe is uh, newer, we would just remove their approve access and require approval on all submissions. So you'll be able to define these across mechanics and in each, uh, each part of the application. And for any individuals requiring approval on their metric submissions, you'll be able to see those in the pending approval page here in metric submissions. So these are the submissions that will require approval in a manager who has access to approve uh, creating packages from harvest. In this example, we'll be able to come in and approve that submission. Also, also worth noting that you can add notifications both for approved submissions and pending submissions. These will go to your inbox uh, if that's helpful for you to just manage which submissions are going through the queue. Just a reminder, once you have your permission groups set, you'll be able to bulk assign these permissions to users on the user management page here. So we had to filter down to a team, for example, and assign the new permission group, whoops, assign the new permission group that you've just created. So that's an overview of permission groups in Canix. I hope this was helpful. And again, see this uh, detailed article if you have any questions at all on what the specific permissions allow for in mechanics. Thanks for watching.